Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> I report on ongoing research about bilingual dictionary drafting by bootstrapping WordNet and BabelNet. I speak on behalf of my colleague Fritz Kliche, computational linguist in Hildesheim, and uh, myself. I work at the University of the Basque Country and recently have switched also to Hildesheim. Here an overview um, of my talk. First, a uh, brief uh, introduction to the motivation behind our research, um, an overview of bilingual dictionary drafting methods, and I will introduce you briefly to some previous research on that. Um, in the first main part, I will explain what we want to do and say something about the type of resource we are obtaining our data from and how we have extracted the data and built the dictionary draft and about what we are actually, actually looking for, and that is English equivalence to standard Basque dictionary headwords, and what we have found. In the second main part, we will present the quantitative and qualitative evaluation of the obtained bilingual dictionary draft, and then we draw some conclusions and have an outlook to the future. The Ethnologue language catalogue counts more than 400 languages with one million speakers or more, but many, many language pairs remain uncovered or scarcely covered in bilingual lexicography. For example, in Basque, for Basque, we have good print and online dictionaries just for Spanish, French, English and Russian. Yeah, and all the other language pairs, even where one of the top ten languages of the world is involved, remain uncovered. So what do we do if we want to look up something uh, in another language and don't have any suitable bilingual uh, dictionary, we can either use two bilingual dictionaries, with it, which is time-consuming, or we can rely on automatically built dictionaries or machine translations, and more and more web portals offer this kind of service. Now, and the disadvantage of both of these approaches is that we have lots of misled lookups, which is mainly due to polysemy structures that are asymmetric across languages. So, if we want to produce more bilingual dictionaries for uncovered language pairs, it makes sense to look into automated drafting methods um, because it saves human resources. And if we keep the back door open, we can, uh, after the manual editing, yeah, after converting the dictionary draft into a dictionary, we can use uh, the, this, this data for upgrading the original resources employed in the drafting process. So, by which methods um, are we able to draft bilingual uh, dictionary content? We can do it corpus-based by word alignment in parallel corpora. This goes back to the work of Gale and Church in the 90s and has been applied in multiple occasions, for example, by Heja and others in 2010 uh, for a language pair like Hungarian-Lithuanian, yeah, which is also a scarcely resourced language pair with small corpora. If we do a word alignment in multilingual corpora, we can actually get uh, information for word sense disambiguation um, using the asymmetries in the polysemy across languages. Yeah. Um, Els Lefeva in Ghent has some recent research about this, and Kazakov and Shahid offer quite a complete survey about that. We could also connect lemma-based lexical resources to each other, which is the dictionary pivoting, and then we may filter out polysemy-related um, errors with corpus-based methods. We could set a threshold for distributional similarity in comparable corpora, as done by Sara Legi and his colleagues for Basque. And then we could extract data from concept-oriented resources like <coughs> Wikipedia, Open Multilingual WordNet, ConceptNet or BabelNet. Um, what we have done so far on all this, and you find all these tests for all of these methods in our research um, related to Basque. First, uh, we developed a set of methods for defining Basque translation equivalence, equivalent ca candidates to German dictionary headwords yeah, as a first showcase. Here we built just bilingual word lists without word sense disambiguation. We got Basque data for two-thirds of a German frequency lemma list of 40,000 items. Half of it has been evaluated as accurate. Yeah? In this step, there was no word sense disambiguation still. Then 
we proposed a workflow for a new series of bilingual dictionaries with BASC, which involves a drafting of the BASC dictionary headword list and corresponding lemma part of speech entities and the drafting of word sense to word sense relations uh, of translation equivalents using, um, using WordNet mainly. And now we present a quantitative and qualitative evaluation of Basque English word sense to word sense equivalences attracted from WordNet and from Babelnet. So, this uh, is a comparison between lemma oriented and concept oriented resources. In a, in a lemma oriented resource, of course, like here, we see three, uh, in this example, we see three word senses for the German lemma Pferd, and on the other side, we see three German synonyms that are actually lexicalizations of one of the concepts shown of, of the left side and lexicalizations in other languages. So it is clear that uh, by extracting data from concept-oriented resources, we can draw sense-to-sense -sense mappings, which is what we want to do. And then, how do you get our data from WordNet and from BabelNet? For WordNet, we download the WordNets and table format uh, and get from there the interlingual index, which are the unique synset IDs and the lexicalizations in the two languages, and build a single XML document from this. For Babelnet, we download the complete dump file with this 16 gigas in compressed state, and uh, we retrieve using the Babelnet's own J Java API, the synset IDs, we go through the whole Babelnet, yeah, we re retrieve the synset IDs, the synset type, with this, which is concept or named entity, the English glosses, and the lexicalizations in the two languages we want, together with the sources. Yeah, in Babelnet, you, always, you find next to a lexical, lexicalization the source for it. Then we calculate the intersections of what we find um, to what we are looking for, which um, we call quantitative evaluation. For that, we need first a graphical normalization of our Basque lemmata. In, in the Basque case, we are talking about initial case, spaces, and hyphens. And then what we call the qualitative evaluation is a manual assessment of the adequacy of the found translation equivalent. For the evaluators, we build a user-friendly view of the XML document. We do that in the Chuanelex dictionary writing system. We show them, show them the English glosses and the lexicalizations in the two languages, and the drop-down menu for choosing the assessment value. We will see this on a screenshot a bit later. So this is what we get for English Basque and Babelnet. A huge cake of 2.4 million synsets. Yeah, but we have to have in mind that um, the vast majority, 71%, are um, what Babelnet thinks will be a global, uh, an internationalism with global value. Yeah? So they are Basque lexicalizations by default, things like pasta, zamba, brahman, yoga, biology terms, medicine terms, IT terms, and abbreviations. Yeah? The uh, yellow part are named entities. The, these actually may be translated, like in Den Haag, The Hague, Haga, and Basque. Yeah, but 95% uh, of what we are looking for is in the blue blue part, which is relatively small but still has 100, 114,000 concepts uh, that come from all these uh, sources sh shown uh, shown here, mainly from open open multilingual WordNet, but also from a bunch of other sources. We will see in detail a bit later. This is what we are actually looking for, standard Basque dictionary lemmata. In 2015, we defined this lemma list. Um, on this list, there appear lemmata that appear in one of the two big, biggest Basque corpora, and at the same time, in one of the six major lexical resources for Basque. And named entities are filtered out. Yeah, it is 50, 58,000 items. And this is the quantitative evaluation. Uh, for what do we get any data? Yeah, our Basque Lemma list counts nearly 58,000 items. One third we get covered by the Basque WordNet. A little less we get covered from the Basque WordNet and BabelNet at the same time, which is due to the fact that Basque WordNet developers um, yeah, 
have some content that they weren't able to map to the English BirdNet. Yeah, this is like 100 or something, uh, 100 and concepts. And BibleNet covers 40%, so it's significantly more. Yeah. Uh, if we see the figures for synsets, it's 25,000 or 24,500 synsets in the Basque WordNet, where w at least one standard Basque lemma sign appears as lexicalization. Yeah? And for BibleNet, it's 34,000. This is the qualitative evaluation screenshot. Yeah? Um, here we see this drop down menu where the evaluator um, chooses one of the values. The possible values are OK for a correct, correct mapping, fuzzy for something which is not false, but without further editing, we wouldn't like to appear in our bilingual dictionary. And false is something we, won't like. Uh, we wouldn't like to appear in our um, dictionary or just noise, no, as NLP people call it. And for Babelnet, we have a fourth value, which is the merge error, uh, which applies when, in cases like this, we see it here, where the London Underground has been merged to a secret group organized to overthrow the government, also lexicalized as underground. No? And this is, uh, a, this is an error of the Babelnet algorithm, because actually these two exist as two dif distinct um, synsets in Princeton WordNet. Yeah? Um, of course, we have uh, examples for good translations. Uh, the fuzziness, most typically, can be something like this, where the English firstborn eldest has, uh, is translated by Sahar, which means something like old, yeah? so something more generic than what, what we actually would like to see in our bilingual dictionary. This is called by the WordNet developers sometimes as an uh, auto-hyponymy problem. Yeah? And uh, our example for a false um, uh, mapping is, is an, yeah, also very typical the most common sense of the verb to treat overlapping the least, the least common senses. No? Um, provide with a gift is the, least, is the least common sense in the typical um, distinction in the English dictionary and the Basque equivalents here apply to the more common sense like in the doctor was treating my leg or something like that. These are the overall results for the qualitative evaluation. If we admit some fuzziness in our results, we see that it reaches 96%. Yeah? If we don't admit fuzziness, it's 85 This is for WordNet. And for BabelNet, we see that if we admit fuzziness, it is also above 90%, clearly above 90%. So, um, yeah, uh, precision doesn't uh, significantly uh, lower. Um, this is the outcome according to sources. We see that there is just one source that, is, that yields really bad results, which is the Wikipedia redirections source. Um, for our purposes, this would be not enough, so we would just sort out this. But the others uh, yeah, have lead to quite good results, as we can see. Now briefly, about uh, something about the post-processing uh, process and the editing. Some central issues, is, uh, issues are, of course, that we want a headword-oriented uh, dictionary, so we have to turn our XML um, up or down, um, which is a trivial task, but uh, connected to this, there is a problem which is far from trivial for lexicographers, that in WordNet, Wikipedia and BabelNet, homonymy is the same as polysemy, yeah, it's treated the same way. Yeah, here you, you see what uh, usually in a dictionary you have the distinction between homonyms and uh, these in the concept-oriented resources would be mixed up with word senses. Yeah? So uh, this distinction is missing in our dictionary draft. And related to polysemy, we, also, we have to ask ourselves, of course, in the post-editing post process, if the draft entry contains all the word senses we want to see or if the splitting of senses is too fine-grained, or if it's even redundant, or if it is too coarse-grained. Benjamin, Martin Benjamin, who just talked in the other room, has been talking in the other room, uh, has some other issues in his paper uh, related to uh, WordNet bootstrapping for lexicographical purposes. And of course, I want to point out the license problem. Yeah, some WordNets are restrictively licensed, so we are not allowed to perform dictionary drafts using that. 
Yeah, uh, if we want to summarize uh, just very briefly our results, our recall using uh, on the Basque headword list using WordNet alone is 30%, using BarbleNet it goes up to 40, but the precision is very, very close to each other in both cases. Yeah. Um, but of course, we, uh, now we have worked only on Basque English. What about all the other, all the uncovered language pairs I was speaking about in the beginning? Uh, does this approach work with language pairs that are actually unresourced in bilingual lexicography? And the answer would be yes, it does. We have um, made a quantitative uh, evaluation for Basque Slovenian, which would be one of these uncovered language pairs. And we have seen that um, our recall is 20% using Basque, English and Slovenian WordNet and 31% using BarbleNet. If we look only at the most frequent Basque headwords, it is 74% for the 5,000 most frequent and 53% for the 20,000 most frequent. So this is quite encouraging. Uh, of course, we have no qualitative assessment so far and think that this would have to start with Slovene English in that case. So we would uh, know which sources of the BabelNet data are okay for our purposes and which maybe are not. So some main conclusions would be, of course, first of all, that we have um, built a bilingual dictionary draft for Basque English with sense-to-sense -sense mappings, with encouraging recall and precision rates, and all this can be applied, applied to other language pairs. And we have, with, by all this, we have set the preliminaries for a broader research project, which would include uh, um, developing a data model that allows manual and semi-automated editing of the data, um, that would allow the inclusion of more item types, and uh, that allows um, a reuse of the manually edited data for an upgrade of the original resources so that we create, create this bootstrapping loop. Yeah, we would like to have uh, experts on a particular language pair uh, editing the data of the, of the particular pair and with that come to an addition of new bilingual dictionaries with Basque that at the moment don't exist. And this is all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have a few minutes for questions, please. One minute. Thanks for your talk. Do you have any way of um, weighting senses by their importance once you've created several language pairs? Uh, no, not at the moment. No, but this would be important, of course, because in, in WordNet and in BabelNet, you may have just any sense, yeah? Um, yeah, and this, this is a problem, of course, we have, we have to address, yeah. <coughs> Uh, but a possible solution would be the domain labels now you find in WordNet. So if you don't find certain names, uh, for example, um, you have a lot of baseball terms in uh, English WordNet now. So uh, by this, these domain labels, you may filter them. Yeah. Do you have any screenshots of your work in Swanalex? Yes, uh, I, can, I can give them to you. Um, I have another presentation in Euralex last year. There, are, I think there are some screenshots. And yeah, we have here we have just this. Yeah, uh, this is the Chwanelex, right? So um, as uh, well, the what the Chwanelex system takes for a lemma is my Synset ID. Yeah, this is how we do that. And yeah, um, you don't see the XML view, you just see the human-friendly uh, view now. But uh, yeah, it would be no problem, I can, I can show you that in the Toronto Lex. We are actually using the same for more language pairs with students in Hildesheim. So they, they are actually evaluating uh, WordNet, uh, WordNet mappings yeah, for more language pairs than just English Basque. Mark
questions? I have a question. Do you have any insight about the quality of the word nets that you have been using? Yeah. Um, all this was about finding out, um, yeah, having evidence for the quality of the Basque English mappings. No? Um, we would have to perform this for all the other word nets too, of course. Yeah, word nets are different. They um, differ from, um, a lot one from each other, uh, depending on the construction method. And yeah, we have for Basque we have really high precision rates, but it's it's a manually built resource. It's all done by humans, and the problems that are there, for example, this auto hyponymy problem, where people um, where the lexicographers translated something with something too generic, they are known. Yeah, they can be addressed in groups. Uh, in automatically built word nets, you will have more and more distinct problems. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you have to look at them one by one. Any more questions, please? So we have lots of time to go to. Sorry? Anyone? No? So we will finish here. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome.